welcome to my YouTube channel. I bought this face in a thrift store, so it's a bit uh, dirty and old. And the top is having a, a, a glaze, it's a bit of a greyish vase. And the rest has a very raw texture. So I'm thinking of keeping this just empty without any decoration and only pa paint here on the, the raw texture. I'm making this series um, because I am soon moving to a new home and I wanted to make some fun art items that are unique pieces for my own house and I hope to inspire you to also go thrift shopping and make things your own because um, there are already so many Mars made products out there and to yeah pay a little bit more attention to the things around you and yeah make your own uh, art on objects you will create a unique environment for yourself where you can really show yourself and be home so that's the idea behind this series and i hope to inspire you to make art on objects too I made, uh, I made a little sketch. Uh, I designed a sort of pattern um, with very abstract flowers and made a very quick sketch of how I want my face to be. Um, it doesn't have to be a very, very good sketch. I just drew a sort of face shape and quickly made decorations just to have a bit of an image in my head. I'm going to add a black border here and then add white stripes on that border and then I'm going to paint black dots all over the vase and give the dots a sort of um, floral stripes and um, as a final layer I'm going to add watercolors on the vase. I think that's really exciting. I've, I've never done that before. I think I'm going to add a layer of clear gesso and then add the watercolors that I always use in my art journals. Uh, I never tried this before, I'm really uh, curious if this is going to be successful. But I did this very same technique on paintings before and after drying I added a base coat um, or a good layer of uh, spray varnish. And that always holds pretty well, so um, I don't really plan to use this vase as a vase, but simply as an art object. So I think um, it's going to work, but I'm not sure yet, so that's pretty exciting. Oh, this watercolor, by the way, is uh, Lunar Black by Daniel Smith. I use it a lot on my art journal pa pages. And uh, yeah, I think that is really looking, uh, that texture that it gives is really looking like my type of more raw art. So that is why I want to try it on this vase.
this is going to be super exciting as um, now that the layer of clear gesso is dry I want to apply my lunar black watercolors on this vase and um, as I make it wet and add the paint I'm also going to drip in it with alcohol which gives a very pretty effect <laughs> but obviously it's ridiculous to work with watercolors on a vase but it's an art vase I'm not going to actually use it as a vase vase I'm just going to place it and um, I'm going to spray uh, a varnish uh, on top of this so yeah um, I don't know if it's going to work if it's not going to work I'll probably not even post this video so <laughs> you can assume that it worked when you see this but I'm still telling you this because um, sometimes it's really exciting to try something new and yeah I guess I just wanted to share that working with watercolors on a vase but I'm very much used to this technique so and I used it before on canvas so I'm actually thinking that it's going to work <laughs> at this moment like how this turned out right now um, it is still a bit sticky that is because I used a watercolor on acrylics and the acrylics actually don't really like water um, but I'm stubborn and I really just like this technique but I discovered that when I leave this to dry for uh, 24 hours it will still dry really well and when you cover it with a good quality varnish um, a spray paint varnish, um, nothing will really happen. Don't use a, um, a varnish, a brush varnish, because then you will wipe off the watercolors. So that is why it's important to use a spray varnish. touch I'm adding tiny little details with a white Posca marker. I'm not going to add dots everywhere but I'm adding some tiny little dots on the large blotches and I'm adding a few more stripes to that inner circle of the flower just like I did on the black part. I think that this face has a sort of um, naive art, African or Aboriginal art vibe um, but it's also really me um, the details that I use are very similar to the details that I'm using in my art journals so I guess that everyone who knows my art um, yeah, can see that I made it because of the techniques and the detail details and that's exactly what I would like my home to be that the decorations um, I have in my home just really are um, showing me not any mass product <laughs> um, also the idea um, of thrift shopping is because uh, we didn't really have any big budgets to do uh, expensive decorating um, so I, of course also like pretty objects I like design um, but um, I don't really like um, IKEA stuff or I, I should say uh, I do like the IKEA stuff but because yeah I'm really much into design and pretty objects but I don't like the fact that thousands of people have the exact same object in their uh, homes. I really love unique pieces. 
and that is what art is. Um, unique pieces. So that is the reason why I'm making these art DIYs as well, to inspire you to make your own unique objects for your house. I am so happy with this vase. It feels like it has my heart and soul now. I do miss something. It's really weird, but in all my journals I have small red accents. So I'm thinking of adding tiny little cadmium red accents. Uh, just, just super tiny little things um, to make it more me. between the original upper part and my typical decorations here. And as I added the red little crosses, I decided to splatter a tiny bit of gold paint over the entire vase. Just some tiny little splatters and that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. You rock! <laughs> Please support me by liking this video and subscribe for more quirky art inspiration and raw self-expression. Ciao!